Good morning, everybody. It is 9.04. Today is April 12th, 2021. Um, in a moment, um, ooh, a little. in a moment, we should be getting started. And um, hopefully some students will be coming in. Well, I'll say the students will be coming in, then we'll get started because uh, can't start anything without y'all. Okay. Here's somebody coming in now. It's 9.05, so perfect timing. DJ and Rosalinda. <clears throat> Good morning, Rosalinda. Good morning, Kamari. I thought DJ was coming in. I Pretty sure I saw his name to let in. Oh, there he is. Good morning, DJ. How you doing? Actually, I'm not going to use this filter. Let me change filters. Let me use this one. I like this. All right, y'all. Today is uh, 9 06. We got a few people here. Let me get y'all down for attendance and we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, how was y'all's weekend? Everybody had a good weekend? Yeah. What'd you do this weekend, DJ? <clears throat> go to my brother's house. Okay. Uh, Kamari, what'd you do for this weekend? We went to Fortress City. Okay. Uh, Rosalinda, what about you? What do you do this weekend? I babysat one of my sister's uh, kids. Okay. Good morning, Darius. Hope you're doing all right. All right, y'all, I'm going to share my screen so we can take a look at Canvas to see what we have for today. As always, taking a look at Canvas <clears throat> under the SFA course for the Reading Edge. If we go to the home section, at the very top, we have our daily reminder, which reminds us to always check your announcements and calendar. So if we go to the announcements section, we see we have a new set of vocabulary words up here for level five, unit four, cycle one, and a whole new set of vocabulary words. So we got eight new words. We have exuberance, which means showing enthusiasm, being extremely joyful and excited. The sample sentence says, my sister's exuberance was contagious and I found myself becoming excited and joyful as well. Uh, next, we have the word taunt. That means to provoke, mock, insult, or tease. The sample sentence says, my sister tried to taunt me but I ignored her and my mother told her to stop. Next, we have the word solemn. That means serious or earnest, solemn. When the new president was sworn in, he looked very solemn and dignified. Uh, fourth word we have is irritation. That means the state of being irritated, annoyed, or aggravated. The sample sentence says, my mother's irritation increased the longer we were stuck in the traffic jam. I'm sure a lot of people get irritated uh, when they get stuck in a traffic jam. I know I do. Uh, next word we have is, dis excuse me, indistinct. Indistinct. That means not clearly marked or defined. You may have heard the word distinct but that in as a prefix, remember, prefixes are just kind of like parts of words that are at the beginning that kind of help change the meaning of word. That indistinct means it's not distinct, okay? So it's not clearly marked. You know, when something is distinct, you can kind of easily tell what it is. You uh, easily distinguish. If it's indistinct, it's not clearly marked or defined, so it's not as easy to tell. The sample sentence says, the hiking trail was indistinct because the plants had grown over the path and it was unmarked, okay? 
Next, we have deceptively. The root word is deceptive. That means trying to deceive or mislead. Kind of like you're trying to trick somebody. So if somebody's acting deceptively, that means they're you know, kind of acting a little tricky. Uh, the sample sentence says, the boy tried to deceptively hide the cookie he had taken without permission. Since he took the cookie without permission, that's why he's trying to be all tricky and sneaky about it and hide it. Next, we have forlorn. Forlorn. That means dreary, unhappy, miserable, or sad. That means when I left for school, excuse me, the sample sentence, excuse me, the sample sentence says, when I left for school, my dog looked very forlorn as he sat at the door and watched me go to the bus stop. So the dog was kind of sad when you saw that person uh, leave to go to the bus stop. Anybody in here have a dog? Nobody have a dog? Darius, you, DJ, you got a dog? What's your dog's name, DJ? Buddy. Okay. Does Buddy look sad whenever you uh, leave and leave Buddy at the house? DJ? No, well, sometimes. Okay. Well, those times that he does sometimes, that he has like a forlorn look, so kind of dreary, unhappy, miserable, or sad. Next, we have rigid, okay? Rigid means stiff, unyielding, hard, inflexible. Stiff, unyielding, hard, or inflexible. It's not that flexible. The sample sentence says, the plastic was too rigid for my dad to break. So he used his saw to cut it into two pieces. And these are your eight vocabulary words, okay? So that's it for the announcement section. Next, let's take a look at the calendar for today. Again, today is April 12th, 2021. So let's look at SFA class. We see that for, we have today's bell work right here. There's another one of those kind of rate the word kind of thing. So you list each vocabulary word, then type the symbol response seen in the box to the right here beside each listed word. Instead of typing a check mark, however, you may type the backslash symbol in case you, you know, the word looks familiar, but you don't quite know what it is. And here you got the list of vocabulary words here. If we go back to the calendar, we see that also today we have a reading from the same book on my honor. We're reading from pages 10 to 24, so roughly uh, 14 to 15 pages, okay? But also we have a team discussion here beneath it. So I think last time I read the team discussion beforehand, so we can kind of Look out for certain things in the reading. Uh, I think we'll just do that after the reading and go straight into it, okay? So again, today we'll be reading On My Honor, pages 10 through 24 for the team discussion. So with that being said, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and then I'm going to pin myself up here. So that way I can move my camera and point it towards book. Again, we'll st we're still reading the book On My Honor by Marion Dane Bauer. I think I'm going to take this filter off while I'm reading. On My Honor by Marion Dane Bauer. Uh, with the new introduction by Katherine Patterson. Or Patterson. And again, we'll be reading from pages 10 through 24. So a pretty long reading for today. Be sure to pay attention and keep up so you'll be able to answer your team, dis uh, team discussion questions, okay? 
All right, so we're on chapter two. I'll zoom in, so. Can everybody see the book okay? Yeah, all right. Let's get this thing rolling. All right. My eraser this time to point. Joel watched his father drive away. He felt betrayed, trapped. How could he explain to Tony that he had been kidding that he had never had any intention of going with him to the park once the idea of climbing the uh -oh, the bluffs it's a little mark right here the letters didn't quite print i'm not gonna write on there though but going, climbing the bluffs had come up those are two f's right here should not write in books those are two f's right there I don't know why I did that. It was a little error when it printed, I guess. But let's continue reading. Can I ride your bike, Joel? Tony begged. Can I, huh? Joel sighed. Tony was like a kid expecting Christmas, not someone about to risk his life. Just for the ride out, he said. When they came back, if they came back, he knew he would be glad for the gears on the Schwinn to make the ride easier. Tony's bike was a hand-me-down that had belonged to three older brothers before it had come to be his. Uh oh, sorry, y'all. There were no fenders, no handle grips, and only a few flecks left of the original red paint. It was perfect for wheelies, though, and for going off ramps. Joel's silver 10-speed could be ridden fast or it could be ridden slowly, but it wasn't good for anything else. Joel reached over to take hold of Tony's bike, supporting his own for Tony at the same time. Come on, he said, let's go. It took only about 10 minutes to reach the edge of town. On their way past the school, Tony stuck out his tongue in the direction of the sixth grade classroom where they had spent last year. Joel, deciding he might as well get into the spirit of the day, followed suit, though he liked school well enough. The sun sizzled in the sky so blue it could have been created out of a paint can. When they left the town behind, they rode between stands of tall, whispering grass rising on each side of the highway. Meadowlarks called from the ditch banks. Tony's exuberance, now that's a vocabulary right, word right here, Tony's exuberance knew no bounds. He rode in figure eights or in circles that occupied both lanes of the nearly deserted highway. Once he tried a, a square and nearly toppled off Joel's bike. Joel moved ahead and when he started down the hill into the Vermilion River Valley, he leaned forward and pumped, pushing Tony's old bike until it hummed. <clears throat> this was the first of many valleys they would encounter. And Joel knew going up, the other side would be tough. Maybe he thought with a sudden rush of hope, Tony would get tired before they got all the way to the park. Soon the bike was going faster than he could pump. So he had to let it coast. Still it gathered speed. He tried once to glance over his shoulder to see how close behind Tony was following. He front wheel wobbled dangerously when he turned his head though, so he kept his eyes forward, concentrating on keeping the wheel still.
His tires buzzed against the smooth blacktop and the wind swept through his hair, holding it back from his face as if by strong fingers. It forced his eyelids open and made his eyes feel dry and crackly. By the time Joel got to the bridge, the lowest point between the two hills, he would be flying. With the speed he had built up, he feared he could be halfway up the other side before he had to get off to push. Joel reached the bottom of the hill and shot across the bridge so fast that he didn't get even a glimpse of the river below. He knew exactly how it would look, though muddy red with lazy, oily looking swirls. As soon as the bike's momentum slowed enough that his legs could keep pace with the spinning wheels, he started pumping, measuring his distance on the upward side. Standing when the pumping began to get hard so he could force each pedal down with his with all his weight. I don't know if y'all uh, have had a tough time riding a bike before going uphill, but I do that too uh, whenever I'm riding a bike. If it gets like really hard to turn that pedal, I kind of just stand up on it and just let my weight kind of push it down. That way it's harder to, or easier to push the pedal down whenever you're going like some kind of uphill like that. All right, but let's continue on. When his legs began to feel rubbery, he climbed off and started pushing. Tony would probably pass him, still riding the Schwinn. That was some hill, huh? He tossed the words over his shoulder, getting no answer. He turned around to see where Tony was. Tony was at the bottom of the hill in the middle of the bridge, the Schwinn leaning carelessly against the flat iron railing. He was hanging a long way out over the railing, peering down at the river. Bummer, Joel said, and glancing up and down the highway to check for cars. Even when he was mad at his father, he couldn't help doing things like that. He U-turned, climbed back on, and began coasting again. The next time, excuse me, next time he wouldn't get more than a few feet trying to start up from a dead stop at the bottom. <clears throat> he would have to walk the entire hill, but of course, Tony didn't think of things like that. Maybe it was time they traded bikes back again. What are you looking at? He asked as he popped a wheelie and spun next to Tony. The river, Tony replied, leaning out even farther. I'm looking at Old Man River. No, you're not. Old Man River is the Mississippi. That's nothing but the Vermilion down there. Tony didn't answer. Joel knew his correction didn't matter to Tony. If he wanted to call the Vermilion Old Man River, he would. He was that way in school too. Even on tests, he drove the teachers nuts. Looking at Tony leaning over the railing like some kind of acrobat on a trapeze, Joel suddenly had to turn away. He wished Tony would be more careful. Beyond all reason, he also wished, as he often had before, that Tony were his brother. They could be twins, the kind that didn't have to look alike or be alike either. With so many other kids in the family, the Sabrinskis wouldn't miss Tony. If they needed a replacement, Joel would gladly trade Bobby the whiner. You realize, Joel said, that's, that it's going to be a long walk up that hill. Tony straightened up and grinned, his teeth bright against his already tanned skin. We don't have to go to Starved Rock, he said. Maybe I've got a better idea. Better than Starve Rock? 
Was there a chance he wasn't going to have to argue with Tony about climbing the bluffs? Tony did a little jig next to the bridge railing as if he could explain himself that way. We've got lots of time. We can do anything we want. Sure we can, Joel agreed enthusiastically. We could even go swimming. Joel couldn't believe his luck. All right, he exclaimed, holding out the flat of his palm for Tony to slap. Tony ignored the gesture and instead bowed, extending a hand in the direction of the reddish brown water slithering far beneath the bridge. It's a great day for swimming, he said. Joel stared. In the river? He demanded. You want to go swimming in the river? Tony shrugged elaborately. Where else? You might as well go swimming in your toilet. Who says? My dad says, that's who. My dad says, Tony Mimic in his, in his voice, uh, excuse me, Tony mimicked his voice coming out high and girlish. Joel decided to ignore the taunt. That's another vocabulary word, taunt. He decided also not to remind Tony of the promise he had been required to make to his father before they left. You know we're not allowed to swim in the Vermilion. Nobody is. It's dangerous. Sinkholes and currents, whirlpools sometimes, besides being dirty. Alligators too, I bet. Tony was suddenly suddenly solemn, and that's another word, solemn, uh, though his eyes still dance. Remember, that's another vocabulary word. The red in the water probably comes from all the bloody pieces of swimmers the gators leave lying around. There's no alligators in the vermilion. Do you think I'm stupid or something? Joel could feel his face growing hot, despite the fact that he knew Tony was only teasing. And the color just comes from clay, red clay. That does it, Tony said, crossing his arms and pulling his t-shirt over his head. If there's no gators and no blood, I'm going swimming for sure. Leaving Joel Schwinn still perched haphazardly against the railing, he went whooping the length of the bridge and crashed through the underbrush along the side of the road. He was swinging his pale blue shirt over his head like a lasso. Come on, Joel, he yelled back. The last one ends a two-toed sloth. Chapter three. Everybody all right? Gary, is you still with us? All right. Going out a little bit further. Chapter three. Joel watched Tony yelling and flailing his arms as he ran down the steep hill to the river. He shook his head. That patch of shiny green leaves halfway down, that was to that Tony was romping through was probably poison ivy. He glanced over at his bike. Tony hadn't even bothered to take to hide it in the weeds along the side of the road. Joel propped Tony's old bike against the railing and wheeled his own off the bridge. Laying it gently in the wood weeds beneath the structure, he considered for a moment, leaving Tony's bike right where Tony had left his, out in the open where anybody could steal it. He didn't, though. If Tony's bike got stolen, he might never, never get another. Swimming in the Vermilion, of all the crazy ideas, maybe even crazier than climbing the bluffs, Joel shook his head as he laid Tony's bike next to his own. Then he started down the hill. You see what I mean? Joel said when he arrived next to Tony on the riverbank. 
it's really dirty. And the worst of the stuff, chemicals and sewage, you can't even see. Tony ignored him, stripping off his jeans and his underwear. He had already dropped his shirt and kicked his sneakers off before Joel arrived. It's wet, isn't it? He asked. Like I said, Joel replied, so's your toilet. Tony stepped into the river at the edge and the dirty water lapping over his feet made him disappear entirely. He turned back to Joel and grinned. Not enough water in the, my toilet. I tried it once, you see. You would, Joel replied. He wanted to sound grumpy, but he could feel the answering smile breaking through. You coming in, Tony called back when the water swirled around his knees. I'm waiting for you to drown, Joel answered. I just want to see it so I can tell your folks. Keep them from worrying, Tony tossed back. Keep your mom from waiting supper, Joel replied. They both laughed then, and then the laughter had faded. Tony said, well, are you coming in or are you just going to stand there and gawk? Who's gawking? Joel pushed one sneaker off with the toe of the other. You're nothing to look at. The water was just right, cool enough to raise goose flesh at first, but not cold enough to be numbing. The flow past Joel's legs felt like a refreshing massage. He hadn't realized, though, that the current was so strong. It seemed as though the water were barely moving when he looked down from the bridge. Watch out for the current, he called to Tony, standing several feet upriver from him. Ah, Tony cried, grasping himself by the throat with, his, with both hands. The current, it's got me. It's going to suck me under. It's going to swallow me up. And he toppled over backward, howling. His head disappeared beneath the foaming water. He churned up. Joel stood where he was, waiting. When Tony stood up, he was a prehistoric monster emerging from a swamp. Joel could tell that was what he was by the way he stood. Water streaming down his face, arm hanging low, head hunched forward. Come on, Joel said. If we're going to swim, let's go back to the pool. It'll be better there. Tony straightened up. Why? This is fun. But there's a sliding board at the pool. And there's other kids, too. Who needs a sliding board or other kids? Tony replied. Besides, I'm swimming now. And he plunged into the water, face first this time but thrashing just as much as before. Doesn't look like he even knows how, Joel muttered to himself, but then he wiped away the idea. It seemed disloyal. Tony went to the pool with him now and then, and he did the same things everybody else did. They spent most of their time going down the slide into shallow water or splashing one another. Joel eased himself deeper into the water and dog paddled a few strokes. He didn't want to put his face down to swim properly. He'd take the artificial blue of a pool and the sting of the chlorine any day. The river smelled of decaying fish. Maybe we ought to come down here every day. Work out. We could be on the swim team next year in junior high, Tony was saying. Joel stopped swimming to swim and stood up. We'd get caught for sure if we started coming down here every day. Who's to see us? Tony asked. I don't know, but somebody would. 
somebody driving over the bridge probably. Joel looked up toward the highway bridge, but there were no cars in sight. Tony shook his head. Sometimes, Bates, you just sound like your old man. Joel could feel the head flooding his face. What's wrong with that? Be careful in that tree, son, Tony mimicked. You might get hurt. Watch Bobby when he crosses the street. Those drivers never pay any. Joel had been moving closer to Tony as he spoke, and now he gave him a hard shove. Tony was expecting it, though, and he didn't even step backward. He countered with a push of his own. Joel swung his arms to keep his balance, and he felt the bubble of anger that had been with him all morning expand inside his chest. What right, excuse me, what right did Tony have to make fun of his father? At least my dad doesn't go around hitting kids with a belt. He said, stepping closer to Tony and clenching his fists. Tony went white around the mouth and Joel was instantly sorry that he had picked on Tony's father. He didn't know that Mr. Zabrinsky had ever hit Tony with the belt anyway. He had only seen him take off after Tony once, snaking his belt out through the loops with one hand and holding his pants up with the other. Actually, Joel had thought it was kind of funny at the time in a scary sort of way. Tony took a wide swing at the side of Joel's head. Joel ducked it easily. Tony was bigger and heavier than he was, but he was slower too. For a moment, they stood glowering at one another, excuse me, breathing hard, their fists raised. Then Tony turned and began to slog through the water toward the riverbank. Where are you going? Joel asked. To Starving Rock, came the reply. I'm gonna climb the bluffs by myself. Joel, excuse me, Joel's heart sank. <clears throat> he didn't especially want to bike back to town alone, and he certainly didn't want Tony climbing the bluffs by himself. Oh, come on, Tony, he pleaded. We can stay here. This is fun. Y'all doing okay? Darius, you good? Rosalind, you good? DJ, you okay? All right. Only got like a couple more pages left. Like swimming in your toilet, Tony replied without looking back. Joel answered with the fifth, excuse me, with the first thing that popped into his head. Towards toilets aren't so bad. And to show Tony that he meant it, he plunged into the water, immersing his face and taking several strokes so that when he stood up, he was in front of Tony again. Tony grunted. He still looked pretty mad. You're just saying that because you're scared to climb the bluffs. Again, the irritation flared. we we'll go irritation. Who's scared, Joel demanded. You're the one who's scared. Why, I bet you wouldn't even, he hesitated, looking around for something to challenge Tony with. Something he wouldn't mind doing himself. Swim to that sandbar out there. He indicated a thin, dark island of sand rising out of the river about 100 feet from where they stood. Tony narrowed his eyes, gazed in the direction Joel pointed. Why should I be scared of that? He asked scornfully. I'll bet the river doesn't get deeper than this the whole way. The water divided at Tony's waist in a sharp V. I'll bet it's deeper than this lots of places, Joel said. River bottoms change. That's one of the reasons they're so dangerous. Page 24. You okay, Darius? We're almost done. 
All right, Darius. All right, we're going to continue. I wouldn't be scared even if it was 10 foot deep. Joel stepped closer. You willing to swim it then? Tony's chin shot up. Sure, unless you're too chicken to swim it too. We'll see who's chicken, Joel said. And that is the reading for today. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Next, let's take a look at the team discussion questions we have. Let me share my screen once more. All right, so find our team discussions here for today's day. Again, April 12th, 2021. We have five questions. The first question asks, why does Tony suggest that he and Joel work out at the river rather than at the pool? What does this tell you about Tony? Use information from the text to support your answer. So think about why uh, he said that they could just work out there instead of going to like the pool where everybody else goes. Uh, what do you think, Amari? Why do you think it'd be better for them to work out there than at the regular pool? So I won't get distracted. That's one reason. I think one good reason maybe because um, there's like a bit of a current, so it's like harder for them to like swim. So that way it'll make them a little stronger. But definitely they could not, they wouldn't be as distracted because you know it's only them two. So good answer, Kamari. All right, question two. Read the following from page 22. Tony turned and began to slog through the water toward uh, the riverbank. Where are you going? Joe asked. To starve rock, came the reply. I'm going, I'm going to climb the bluffs by myself. What causes Tony to decide this? How does Joel react to Tony's decision? Number three, on page 21, Joel gets very angry when and just pick one of these to see which one. Why does Joel get angry? Either A, when Tony calls Joel a chicken. B, when Tony asks that he is going to starve the rock, uh, State Park. C, when Tony mimics Joel's father. Or D, when Tony uh, throws Joel's clothes in the river. Uh, question four, based on what you have read so far, would you consider Joel to be a good friend to Tony? Why or why not? Number five, what do many of the vocabulary words have in common? And you could think about, think back towards the list of vocabulary words to answer that. But those are the five questions for uh, today's team discussion. And that's basically all we're gonna do for class for today, okay? Uh, does anybody have any questions for me about anything? All right, if y'all do, feel free to reach out to me, okay? Uh, inbox me on Canvas or call me here at the school. Uh, it was great seeing y'all. I hope y'all uh, have a great day for the rest of today's day, and uh, I'll see y'all tomorrow, okay? All right, y'all take it easy, okay?